that said, um, you're a good, good father and I am loved by you. So today before we jump into too much, I want you to reflect on what kind of sentences are you using with the words I am and then what do you put after that? Think about your week. I'm blessed, okay, I hear that. I am a child of God, you're giving me the good ones, right? <laughs> hey? I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> right? So maybe some people say I am angry. I'm tired. I'm upset. I'm worried. Yes. I'm hey? I'm Say it, brother, say it. <laughs> say it. I'm miserable. I'm miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all say these things, right? Because they happen to us. And we say, I am, I am this, I am that, I am that. Right. But now today, did you know that the words that we speak are, are seeds that we sow? Did you know that? And did you know that the more you say negative things about your situation, about you, the more it manifests or more, the more it becomes reality. Did you know that? If you don't really, if you're not sick, right? But in the morning you feel you, you know when you were in school and you decided you don't want to go to school, you want to act sick. Who of you did that? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what do you start doing? You say, hey, I don't feel well. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a fever. <laughs> oh, I think my tummy, my tummy hurts. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Next thing, ma! <laughs> I'm sick! <laughs> Can't go! And what usually happens? You started getting those symptoms, mm. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is, right? Okay. Now the same thing is you can be happy now. If you start saying I'm sad, I'm telling you in half an hour you'll be sad. Mm. Because it just happens like that. It just happens like that, that whatever you say over you, the power of what comes after I am. So that's one thing that I want to bring to your attention today is what is after your I am? You know? Some people will say, I am forgotten. I am unworthy. I am unloved. I am alone. And all those things might be what you are experiencing in that moment because I'm not saying now you disregard what's around you, right? So those things might be happening to you at this moment. And it might be the facts that you are seeing around you at this moment, right? And then they are coming out of your mouth. But the more you say them, the more it's ammunition for the enemy to use those very things and make them a reality in your life. So we have to be careful of what, what we say, right? What comes out of our mouths. But more than that, I think it's important that we realize that our circumstances around us now are facts, but they're not truth. So I want to challenge you today on the fact versus truth. Right? Because what is a fact? A fact is something that you, that you perceive with your senses. Right? You see it. You hear it. You feel it. You taste it, right? The fact that it is, it's cold, isn't it? You feel it. It's cold. Right? But if the Spirit of the Lord moves in this place right now, can that cold be changed? Yes. yes. Then it can be warm in here. Isn't it? Yes. So fact can be changed. Okay. The fact might be right, that right now you are feeling sad. But what happens if we're together here and we give each other hugs, you know, and the presence of the Lord is around us, and you start laughing, mm. and then you feel joy. Are you still sad? No. No. So the fact was, you were sad. But now the fact can be that you're happy. 
Okay. Do you see how facts that we get with our natural senses, what we see, what we feel, what we hear, those things can change. Okay? They can change. Right now you can you can be sick, right? The fact is you are sick. The fact is you have a headache. The Lord can heal you. Bam! Then where's that fact? Down the toilet. Isn't it? Facts can change. But now you see the problem is when we start taking that facts and we make them truths in our lives. And then we take those facts and we start speaking them about in the way of I am. I am sick. Because if you say, I am sick, and you keep on saying, I am sick, then that fact will become a false truth or a lie to you that you believe. Are you with me? Okay. Because the truth is this. The truth is what the Lord says about you. The truth is Jesus Christ. You can put up for us there John 14, 6, I think. John 14.6. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Right. So facts are around us. Facts can be many things. But it becomes a danger to you when you allow that fact to come and change your identity. Because as soon as you say, I am, you're talking about identity. The words I am means equals to identity. So if you say, I am angry, then it equals to your identity. And then you become that thing. Because you're speaking that over your life and you're agreeing with that thing. Yes, this is all I am. So the power of the I am is so important. And the language that we use. And like I said, it's not to say that you don't feel that or experience that in that moment. But you agree with that fact. And you agree with saying, yes, this fact, that could be changed. But this fact I'm taking now is the truth of my identity. Then you become that thing. <clears throat> Do you have it, Francisca? Right. Can you just make it smaller for us then? It's Jesus and Jesus said, I am. Wow. Jesus used the I am. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Jesus knew his identity. And his identity wasn't in fact. His identity was in the truth of who he was, a son of God. And he said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said three statements there of his I am. So if he says that he is the truth, then we must believe everything that he says about us. And if he is the firstborn of the Lord, and we are also now sons of God, also born into this bloodline, doesn't that mean that we also now have to start saying the things that Jesus said about himself? Right? Okay? It doesn't say that we become Jesus, but it says that we start saying the things that he says about us in the word. And that is truth. So there's two things in life. There are facts and there are truths. Amen. The fact is you might be sick right now. The truth is by stripes you are healed. Amen. The fact is you might not feel healed, but feel is where in your senses. Feel is where in your soul. Okay. So fact is linked to senses, you know, by, like, like your physical area. But fact is also linked to your soul. Fact is your emotions, so what do you feel? Fact is your thinking, your thoughts. That's all fact, right? Way back then, it was a fact that the earth was flat. People believed it. People believed you're going to be on a boat, and you're going to be on an ocean, you're going to go, and you're going to fall off. Fall off the earth. It was a fact. It was, ha, hello, earth is round. Okay? Now that fact changed. And now the thinking also changed. Okay, so you see how fact is linked to how we feel and what we think. It's in our soul part. But the fact is also linked to our free will, unfortunately. But we have to allow ourselves, as sons of God, to say, you know, I'm not going to keep my focus on facts anymore. I'm going to work on truth. Because Jesus is truth. And Jesus said his word is truth. 
And that is what I have to connect my I am's to. Because that is who I really am. That is my identity. And we have to change that, right? Change those I am's to what the Lord says about us. So right now, the fact might be that you feel lonely. Truth is, you are accepted and loved. The fact is, you might feel like a disappointment. You might feel like a useless piece of whatever. Truth is, you are a son of God. Truth is, Jesus gave his life for you. Truth is, he knows the hairs on your head. Truth is, he said he created you in the womb. Truth is that he says he's got a plan for you and a future for you. So the fact that you don't have a job currently doesn't change the truth that you have a destiny and a purpose in Jesus Christ. The fact that you might not currently have finances in your bank account or whatever doesn't change the fact that the truth doesn't change the truth that the Lord is your provider and that you have abundance in your heavenly account and that the Lord can provide in all your needs because that's the truth, isn't it? So right now I want you to just examine yourself because the I am's flow so quickly out of our mouths. And the one that I've used the most this week, Pastor, you'll understand now, is that I am tired. And the more you say I am tired, the more tired you'll be. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Yo, everywhere I went this week, yo, I'm tired, I'm tired. Even told my apostle, Apostle Deborah, I said, Apostle, I'm tired, I'm tired. So what, what, what did the enemy come and do? He said, you're tired, I'll make you tired. Because what we speak, right, is seeds, and those things become reality. They become the next fact for us, you see? But the truth of the Lord can break any fact that you find yourself in. The truth of the Lord can help and unlock your mind where you've been stuck in a fact. I am poor. I am I'm a slave. You know, all of these things that we keep on saying the whole time. You're not going to break out of it unless you allow the truth of the Lord to come and change how you think, change how you speak. And in those new seeds that you are aligning yourself with the truth of God, those things will start manifesting in your life. But if you still keep yourself stuck by the facts and speaking those things over yourself the whole time, that is what you'll see. So what does it come down to? A change up here. An understanding first of all that the facts around you, the circumstances that you find yourself in right now, the way people react towards you, what you have, what's going on around you, that that doesn't determine your worth and that doesn't say who you are. Because they're facts, they're temporal, they can change. Those things are just the by the way where you are currently, but the Lord is with you on this journey. And the Lord wants to take you to that new place, to that place where you're supposed to be. But you have to come into agreement with the Lord. And we learned this from Apostle Bill Johnson this week in the book we were reading. And he said, what are you in agreement with? Are you agreeing with the enemy? Are you agreeing with all these facts that you see around you? Yes, I've seen so. I've seen enough evidence now that I am worthless. So yes, I am worthless. And the more you say I am worthless, the more people will treat you like you are worthless. And the more you will start believing it because you're seeing the evidence. You're stuck in that cycle of the wrong identities, and you keep on speaking it over yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know I'm repeating, but I want you to get this. So what are you currently speaking over yourself? And the, the, the word says, Jesus said, what's inside of you, what the heart is full of, yeah, yeah, yeah. will come out of the mouth. That's right. That's right. Amen. Right? Yeah. So what's coming out of your mouth, that'll show you what's inside of your heart. And that'll show you what lies of the enemy you have taken in to agree with sure, now. Sure, sure. So examine yourself right now. Examine what lies of the enemy you have taken as truth for you. And decide today that those things, you know, I'm going to kick them off me. 
I'm going to take the real truth, the truth of the Lord about who I am. Yes. You know, the Lord is a good, good Father. And we are loved by the Lord. And nothing can change that fact. That's yes. right. That's right. Nothing can change that truth. Sorry, that's what I meant. Hallelujah. Nothing can tra- change the truth that the Lord loves you. But the more you say, oh, I am unlovable, I am forgotten, I am, you know, all those things. The more they will manifest in your life and the more the enemy will send you evidence of that. Because he wants you to believe that lie. Sure. Right? Because he wants to keep you trapped in thinking that way. Sure. Because how powerful are you when you are believing a lot of lies? Sure. Yeah. How powerful are you when all of these facts are just pushing you down? Not at all, right? You're a slave. You just go through your life every day. You have to get up again. You know? But when you can start breaking through these things, first year, and that's why a lot of people don't see things around them change. Because they're not willing to allow the truth of the Lord to set them free upstairs. Because if you're not going to be set free up here, your behavior won't change. Your language won't change, you know? Because when the Lord sets you free up here, you know, your heart becomes full of the truth of the Lord. And that starts coming out. And that when it comes out, that starts changing your circumstances. So now people say, no, I will start serving the Lord when I see something change around me. It doesn't work that way. You must allow the Lord to transform you like we said last week. Transformational, you know. Inside here by the word of the Lord. By saying, you know, I'm going to stop just believing all these lies of the enemy. I'm poor. No, I'm not. I'm a child of God. To God, everything belongs to the Lord. So if I'm a child of the King, doesn't that mean that everything also belongs to me? So I'm just trapped in these lies. I'm trapped in this this thing of I'm poor. I'm not. And you're going to say, no more. about these things because that is what the truth does sets us free but I cannot do this for you you have to make the decision to say I'm done with lies I'm done with deception I'm done with with just believing the enemy you know can we go to John 8 44 please John 8 44 we look now at what Jesus said I'm the way I'm the truth and the life. Don't you don't you want to be aligned with this? Don't be aligned with the, with the Son of God. John eight forty four, please. All right. Let's see what Jesus says about the deceiver himself. Can you see there? He says, "You belong to your father, the devil." These are people now who believe lies. When you're believing lies and you're in agreement with the lies, it means that you have made a covenant with the lies. You have made a covenant with those things that will still, still keep you slave. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. Can you see that? Not holding to the truth. But Jesus said, I am the truth. Right? So what did the devil do? way back then. He decided the truth of God wasn't good enough. And he's moving away from it. You see, not holding to truth, for there is no truth in him. 
When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar and the father of lies. So I'm here to expose the enemy in your life right now. I'm here to expose those lies that you've taken into yourself and that have changed your identity. So come on. The Lord says, Father God says, you are a child of God. Hallelujah. He says you are free. It's for freedom that you've been set free, so don't become a slave again. Stop believing lies. Yes, yes. Stop believing lies. Because that's the moment you can start stepping out of these things. How do you break free from them? Start believing the truth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you start believing it inside, your heart is full of, will come out of your mouth, you will start speaking it. As you start speaking it, it seeds all around you, and then what? Ta-da! You start seeing it. Yes. But people are trapped. So many people trapped in the cycle of believing the long, wrong things, saying the wrong things, and then seeing the wrong things, and then crying about what they see. Blaming the Lord for what they see, isn't it? Blame the Lord for what's around them because they don't really want that. But they're not willing to take the responsibility to make the change. Amen. The Lord gave us free will. Why? Because the Lord is not going to take you and you know, make you do something. But the Lord gave you free will so that you can choose the truth of the Lord. So that you can choose to stand up and say, no longer, no longer, but I am son of God child of God. I'm set free. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm happy. Even if the sadness wants to come over you, you say, ah, sadness. Ah, lies from the filth of, the, of hell. You know, lies from the enemy. Father of lies. I Get off me, Satan. I'm happy. I'm happy in Jesus' name. I'm happy. You look in the mirror and you smile. Yes. And the more you say that, the more you believe the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because yes. you won't feel it immediately, guys, because that's not how it works. You've got to believe that truth first. You have to allow that truth inside of you. That truth, that believing what the heart is full of, comes out the mouth. That's right. Yes. You start seeing, saying it. Then you start seeing it. Okay, so I'm asking you again. Do you have some language changes you have to make? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's good. <clears throat> Be careful what comes out. Because what comes out shows you what's inside. <clears throat> Start monitoring yourself, you know. And it started with me this week with a lot of things I was saying. I said, I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. I'm tired, I said a lot. I'm defeated, I said some days. Can you imagine, can you imagine how much the enemy laughs at me? Sure. When I say, oh, I'm defeated, I'm, he's like, ha, ha, yes you are. <laughs> Stupid, silly Christian. <laughs> can you imagine that? We just, we just hand him all of these things on a, on a gold platter, you know, by saying, I'm defeated. And then you'll send things over your way to make you see more that you are defeated. You see, and it works like that. Okay, are we going to do musical mic now? <laughs> and then I want comments. Okay, so we just sang that song now. I am loved by you. We also have I am a child of God. We also have a song called um, I am a friend of God. You know, there's so many I, other I am's. So investigate your life because the, you know the devil he studies you. And he knows what, what are your buttons. He knows what things will work on you that might not work on the person next to you. So you have to now ask Holy Spirit in this moment, you know, to show you in what areas has he gotten hold of you, a hold of your mind still. In which areas are you still a slave? And you'll know that by the words, right? What you've been saying, what you've been feeling, what you've been thinking. Sure. Okay. And then what do you do next? You all have Google, right, on your phones? You all somehow have a place where you can, you know, Google things like, like, um, what did Rihanna say to whoever now yesterday? You can all Google that, right? <laughs> yeah, so don't tell me you can't Google the word. Right, okay. So what you do is you Google and you say, verses on anger. 
and you'll get verses. You'll get truth on that. Then you change your I am angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. You change to saying, you know, I don't know. Whatever the verse is that you can get, you know. I'm anxious. I'm anxious. I'm worried. Then you go to Philippians 4 and you, you take the word that says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, make your request known to God. Say, oh Lord, I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. I said that this week as well a lot. You know, and then the word says, the peace of God that transcends, that goes above all understanding. So it, can, it, it might as well say, the peace of God that is greater than any fact will God your sure. hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So you have to investigate, right? You have to be very sure, you know, is this thing a fact or is it a truth? If it's a truth from the word of God and from the Lord, you can align yourself, you can take it, you can agree. If it's a lie, you better keep that thing off of you. You better ask the Lord to remove it from you right now. Because you don't want to be slaves anymore. You know, you all want to move upright. You all want to, to, to be healed more. You all want to have more in life. You all want to move close into that destiny that the Lord has prepared for you and has written down in his book for you. You all want that, is it? Yes. Otherwise, why are you here? Mm, yes. We are here because we want to improve. Yes. We are here because yes. we want to grow. Yes. 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 Right? So as the word says, do not let those things enslave you yes. again. Sure. Amen. 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 Okay. Should we do musical mic or is there anybody who just has a question or a comment? Oh, Pastor Arne. Always has some words. <laughs> you guys know if you if you you know sports people, even if you watch the news, you know that Muhammad Ali passed um, yesterday. And you guys know I'm a great fan of, of sports and sporting icons, and he was probably the greatest. Here's the thing about Muhammad Ali: he said, "I am the greatest." You guys know that. Wow. Yeah. He said, but here's the thing about that: he said, "I am the greatest" before he became the greatest. Wow. Yeah. He started saying that he is the greatest athlete in the world when he was still a teenager, before he even took up professional mm -hmm. boxing. And guess what? By the time he stepped into that ring and he became the youngest at that time heavyweight champion or whatever, he was the greatest. But he believed that he was the greatest because he was saying I am the greatest before he was the greatest yeah. and if you know anything about Muhammad Ali you know that he was named the athlete of the 20th century mm. how much of that was skill I don't know but I do believe a big chunk of that was because of the belief and the words that he spoke out mm. over himself you know some people might have even said he's a bit cocky he's arrogant he's all of those things fine but look how he lived out those things he said, I'm, I'm, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. He said, I'm beautiful, I'm this, I'm that. And you saw it in the way he walked. Mm. But if people walking around say, I'm useless, I'm hopeless, you see it on their face as well. Yes, yes. You see it on the outcome and the results of their life as well. Yes. So what are you saying, what are you speaking? You know, over your life. And I agree with Pastor, and I want you to remember this. What seeds are you sowing? What seeds are you throwing? around you because today's seeds are tomorrow's thorns or tomorrow's flowers yes. and you can decide today's seeds are tomorrow's thorns or tomorrow's flowers mm. that you are spewing all around you mm. yeah. he said i'm the greatest before he was the greatest mm. yeah. i'll leave you with that thought amen, mm. amen. Anyone else wants to, just to say something or share something? You know, I like doing that in my sessions. Anybody? Or, or you just had like a revelation about this and you just want to. You can put up 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 for me. Anybody want this mic? Okay, go, Seth. <laughs> I'll open the floor. <laughs> Um, so I basically just want to testify about the, the greatness of God. Um, we had a prayer meeting and Pastor R was kind of brutal and we had to be very, very honest. And I was actually praying for that. And so I was honest for the first time, completely honest for the first time ever. And things started to change like that. 
and I uh, started to spend more time in prayer because I actually understand, I understood how I should pray and, and what everything was about and what I was going through. So during my time of prayer, I just got this this vision of this split, almost like the split of the curtain in the tabernacle. And it was like God was saying, God was calling me and I always heard God's voice, but I wasn't obedient to that at all because I still wanted to do this and I still wanted to do that. So I got this vision that God actually said, uh, God said, step out and then step in. Oh. And I was like, God, okay. I'm not sure how I should do this now, but I'm, I'm really going to try. And I think my beautiful girlfriend there at the back can also <laughs> testify that I've changed completely again. Whatever I, I, I thought that I've changed of now, it's completely different. And within the mess of my family and everything happening, I didn't understand how I could just leave my family. The pastors keep telling me this, but they don't understand and wah, 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 wah. And eventually I got to a point. I can never understand. <laughs> they do. Anyway, uh, eventually I got to the point where I just stepped out and I stepped into God. And I was obedient. I, I quit my job a couple of months ago because God kept telling me it wasn't the right thing. He didn't listen to me. He didn't wait on my timing. And we went through two months of minimum salary, uh, 3,000 rand between the two of us, we had ready to pay and everything. But we got through that and we waited on God's timing and I was obedient to God for the first time in my life because I stepped out and into Him and wow, my life is just amazing. I got the greatest job and you guys won't believe me but eight, weeks, uh, eight days into the job I got a promotion. Wow. Two weeks later, I got another promotion. Wow. <laughs> Thursday, I got another promotion. Wow. And not only that, I got medical aid. Wow. So God just keeps on providing yeah. wherever, wherever there's lack. So I just want to testify about the greatness of God and, and being obedient and being aligned. And by being aligned, that means stepping out of whatever situation you're in and stepping into God. That can be a hashtag for this week. Mm -hmm. Step out and step in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when, whenever you find yourself, wherever you find yourself in a, wherever you find yourself in a nest of lies, and the nest of, of things where you don't want to be. And it's not like you physically stepped out, yeah. but obviously it's up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You decide, I don't want that anymore. And you step out of it, and you step into the truth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So I hope you're getting this by now. We've repeated a lot of times. Okay. Anybody else want to share about what this word means or what, what they <coughs> think? May I? You may. May she? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, sure, Pastor. I really enjoyed actually this word that you brought us. Um, yeah, I think it's brilliant because often, like as a Christian, you're very much. I think people concentrate a lot on the being humble part of being a Christian because I mean, obviously, everything that we have, we owe to someone else. You know, we don't work for what we get. Um, and just as much as I love. Pastor Rosh when she says we have like Christian swagger. I really believe that we should maybe instill like a Christian confidence. Like instead of because I understand like you you owe everything to God, but I really believe that sometimes we forget that we can actually be confident in who we are and walk with our heads extra high because we're the son or daughter of uh, the the God that created everything and and we have everything. Yeah. So with that swipe, I think we must get the mindset with it as well, which I think is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. See how nice it is because we learn from each other, right? Because <laughs> maybe I bring a word, but the Holy Spirit will make it personal for you. Okay, do you want it? Please. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna go through everybody, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. So I was thinking now, 
about the story that Pastor Al said about you saying to your mom, oh, I'm feeling sick, then you later on feel sick. I remember when we were at school, we were, we were terrible actually, we <laughs> tested the power of the mind and we started telling people, no, but you look sick today. How do you know you must be feeling nauseous? And I promise you, before the first break, that person went home. <laughs> And, and that's the thing that I, I thought of now. It's, it's not the power of our mind. The things we think about ourselves is actually even worse than we realize. Because if my lies can affect your well-being, then imagine what your own lies, what you know about yourself. Yes. Sure, good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. And, and you know what? That's, that's why that's why rejection, right? That's why rejection is such a powerful thing against us. And that's why so many of us struggle with rejection. Because it was someone else deciding that you're not good enough for them. It was someone else deciding that they didn't want you. It was someone else saying no thank you, not you. And when they say, no, thank you, not you, and enough times, the lies they speak over you, then you're going to say, okay, no, thank you, not me to yourself. Mm -hmm. If other people didn't want you, and if I'm not with that, then I might as well, you know, just take myself out then, because Apostle Paul Johnson says, what are you in agreement with? What words are you in agreement with about yourself? What words are you in agreement with about your worth? Because the minute you allow those things to be established in your mind, you have got a trust agreement, as Pastor Al said, you are coming to covenant with those things. Mm. Amen. Amen. And just to wrap up, just to remind you once again, what words have you allowed to become covenant in your spirit? About your worth. Mm. About your place. About the love that the Lord has for you. But most importantly, how do you allow that negative or positive agreement to come out of your mouth? Because today's seeds, today's verbal seeds, once again, are either tomorrow's thorns or tomorrow's flowers that I don't have to walk over, but you have to walk over. What are you allowing out of your mouth? to grow all around you. Amen. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you for this word. We want to thank you for all the testimonies. We want to thank you, Lord, because we know that your word does not return to you without having done its purpose. And I just pray right now, Lord, that this word will sit firmly with us. We need to look into who you say we are. Not into the negative words that we've established as a trust agreement in our minds. We need, Lord, to speak words of power, words of truth, kingdom words, so that today's seeds will be flowers for us tomorrow. And I just bless you, Lord. Thank you for Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name.